back. Hi. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Knock Knock High with the Glockenfleckens. I am your host, Will Flannery, also known as Dr. Will Glockenflecken. <laughs> I am also your host, Kristen Flannery, also known as Lady Glockenflecken, and I would just like to point out that you need an eye exam. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> no, no, We were no. just talking okay. about how you think something is blurry okay. that nobody but else thinks is blurry. We're looking at our, our video feed our, our, for, this po- for the video part of this podcast, and I, I, it looked a little blurry to me. And everybody, I tried to fix the focus, but everybody else said it was fine. Mm. And so Kristen thinks it's because my eyes are going bad. I'm just saying you are of a a certain age. I am 38 years old. And how many people come in with just needing the slightest modification by 38 years old? I have slight, I have slight latent hyperopia. So yes, I will need reading glasses before my peers. I'm just but saying, not today, maybe it's now. Lady G. <laughs> not today. I will have I perfect mean, vision all my life. Look, that's how it works when you're an ophthalmologist. We know the secret. And we're not going to tell anybody <laughs> about it. Sorry, this has really hit a nerve Sorry. with you. You, as part of your identity, that you have always me. had perfect eyesight. Do not come for my eyes. <laughs> I've always had perfect eyesight. Well, all good things must come to an end. I became an eye doctor before I ever saw an eye doctor. (laughs) You still have not seen an eye doctor. I have friends. But they haven't given you an eye exam. So? As you tell me, it's very important to get your eyes dilated and go in for a full exam. It is. Once a year. You all should. No, not once a year. Depends on how old you are. Okay, well, sometimes. At your age, every two to three years is fine. Okay, so every two to three years, you should be getting them looked at. Do as I say, <laughs> not as I do. That's that's the motto for me. I'm going to get you in that chair one way or another. And you're going to do my eye exam? No, someone else is, but I'm going to get you there. But I'll hold you down if I have to. I'm just, like, I'm busy. I, I You go there every day. You literally work yeah. in an eye doctor's office. Right? Surrounded by a bunch of other eye doctors. Look, the point is, <laughs> I'm fine, everyone. My eyes are not blurry. Uh, they can't be because I'm perfect. <laughs> Just a little bit of denial. Uh, if, you'll, you'll come around. All right. <laughs> well, let's see. I've thrown you off. I, I, I don't even know what to say now. You're just you're accusing me of being blind. <laughs> say blind. I might as well be. <laughs> How do you think that makes me feel with my negative 3.75? Oh, you're blind. But thank goodness for the miracle of modern medicine, because now we can put nice little spectacles in front of your eyes and allow you to see 2020 again. Just like you. It's what we can do for you, too. Oof. <laughs> I'm 20. I'm 2012. Okay. Well, we're going to have to do some more work okay. on this. Now you're just being a belligerent right. teenager. Well, that's our <laughs> intro for today. Let's talk about our guests, shall we? Oh, yes. Uh, he does not deserve this. These we're getting, shenanigans. We're getting uh, far away from eyeballs with uh, talking to uh, orthopedic spine surgeon, Dr. Mm-hmm. Antonio J. Webb. Now, you might uh, know him from YouTube. That's how I came across it. We talked yes. about that. Uh, he is, um, uh, you can find him, Antonio Webb, MD. That's Webb with two Bs. Two Bs. Uh, he's also on Instagram, uh, Dr. Antonio Webb, MD. Uh, he's on much all the platforms you go check him out um and does great content educational content Mm -hmm. teaches people about being a doctor what it's like to be a spine surgeon yes i'm pretty sure he's some sort of you know what would it be like a supra human like above a human he's 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 uh his upbringing like where he started in life yeah to where he is now really is pretty remarkable it is it really, really is. And uh, it is, it's inspirational. It's, it's just impressive, period. And so, yeah. But uh, then on top of that, he does a bunch of good in the world. Yeah, yeah. Like just trying to give back and, yeah. and with everything. So really fun conversation. Should we get to it? Let's do it. Here he is, Dr. Antonio Webb. Today's episode is brought to you by the Nuance Dragon Ambient Experience, or DAX for short. This is AI-powered ambient technology that helps physicians be more efficient 
and reduces clinical documentation burden. To learn more about how Dax Copilot can help you reduce burnout and restore the joy of practicing medicine, stick around after the episode or visit nuance.com slash discover Dax. That's N-U-A-N-C-E dot com slash discover D-A-X. All right, we are here with Dr. Antonio Webb, and uh, you've told us that because of all your time in the military, people just call you Webb, so I'll just call you Webb. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's what that I sound good. I, I've been going <laughs> by that for the last 20 years since my time in the military. So, uh, yeah, Webb is fine. Well, we appreciate you joining us today. It really is a pleasure to talk with you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. You look like you just got done seeing patients in clinic or, or somewhere. Just got done working out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, I'm in a clinic today. Um, and, yeah, um, you got the, the white coat on. Yeah. Now, as a surgeon, like, like let's be honest, you know, on a, on a happiness scale, where are you in the clinic versus in the operating room? Actually, that, that's a great question. I, I don't really mind uh, e- either one. You know, we, there's this whole big thing about surgeons not liking clinic. I actually enjoy clinic. I, I get to meet patients and talk to them and just learn about their okay. life. Um, I really enjoy it. So, um, but if I had to choose one. You can't really have one without the other, right? You can't yeah. really have one without the exactly, other. Exactly. Yeah. If I had to choose one, it would be in the operating room, though. Um, so I, I, am really excited to talk with you just because, you know, we're both on YouTube. Uh, I, that's why I, where I first found you actually, uh, <laughs> occasionally people will like make like reaction videos to some of my, yeah. I'm sure you got like all kinds of requests like, Hey, have you seen what this <laughs> Glock and Flecken guy is yeah. talking about orthopedic surgeons? So I, and I watched, uh, uh, I think the video you did a while back, uh, uh, reacting to, to my ortho character. And I appreciated your video. Because you're like, you know, you didn't like, you didn't really sugarcoat. You're like, uh, you know, we're not really like totally like this. This yeah. is a really very much a, a, <laughs> exaggeration, a, a bit of a stereotype yeah. here, which yeah. yeah, absolutely is. So I, I appreciate you uh, making that video. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of your work and uh, enjoy the content. I mean, it's something to kind of get us all through the day and especially coming out of the pandemic and, you know, just having some humor and some something that really yeah, just uh, but that, being, <laughs> that being said even though like you're you're you're, you're probably not like the that the typical like bro kind of guy that i'm always portraying as for an orthopedic surgeon you do seem very strong though so I, I i think there's there's something to that <laughs> right well I, I think it's really this figs jacket that i ordered too small i tried to fit in for today <laughs> it was really snug i'm gonna have to send it back but unfortunately i have to put my name on it they won't let me send it back but <laughs> um, I, I try to work out, but <laughs> yeah, not sure. Well, I want to, I guess we, let's start with the, the social media stuff. I want to get into your background because you have a, a very unique, interesting, um, background and kind of how, what, what led you into medicine. But, uh, with, with the, so I love the social media content, the, your YouTube videos you do. How long have you been doing this? Oh man, I've been doing it for a while, probably since 2015 or so. Um, okay, what what got you into to, to making content? I, I, it was actually during medical uh, residency where uh, students were constantly bombarding me with questions and regarding, you know, how do you how to get into orthopedic surgery, how to match as a IMG, just questions relating to the process. And I was getting the same questions kind of an over and over again. And I thought, wow, this is probably a good idea if I just put this into a video where I can just send them to the answer, just copy and paste it and sing, send it really quickly. Uh, so that was really one reason. The second one was yeah. that I realized that a lot of, a lot of uh, surgeons and physicians were blogging kind of online. So I thought that was a niche that no one, no one else was doing. So I decided to kind of go with it. But everybody's blogging these days. <laughs> but you were one of the first. Yeah, so. you're, you're, you're early on it. Yeah, well, it's, you know. I was, I'm not sure if I was the first, but I, I, I was probably <laughs> one of the few surgeons out there that are really doing it. Um, yeah. So, well, because how yeah. do you find the time, right? I mean, it's, it's, you know, you spend so much time operating. I mean, everybody in medicine has a busy job, but, um, it, well, but you don't. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you get a, you get to hear a lot of ophthalmology yeah. jokes here. Um, but <laughs> I mean, it's like I, I, what you do is you have a longer form videos than I do. And so I'm sure it probably takes a lot of time doing all the editing and, and, and filming. And, and so how have you, how have you managed that? work-life balance 
yeah, when, when I was a resident, I didn't have the money to pay for you know some people to kind of help me, editors and videographers. Yeah. But now I have a whole team of people that kind of help me. Oh, good. And I'm actually here with my videographer today. We're just he's hanging out with me today. I have a talk later this afternoon at my college that I graduated from to the pre-med society there. So um, he'll be with oh, me great. as well. So, but it, yeah, it's, it's hard, just like you said, to find time to do it, especially during a busy surgical residency. Um, has probably led to the question by my hand surgeon, that my mentor that I worked with, we were in the case one day and he was like, hey, Dr. Webb, I can't tell if you're left-handed or right-handed the way that you're operating right now. So, <laughs> um, but I should have probably spent, spent a lot more time practicing surgery than, than practice shooting videos. But I don't know. It seems like you've had a lot of, a yeah, lot you of seem experience to be doing here. All right Five for years of ortho residency <laughs> and then another year of, of spinal surgery fellowship. Um, and uh, I'm sure it got easier too, once you got out of training, because, you know, making content as a resident, it, it, it's, you just, the hours that you're putting in as a resident, the hours in the operating room. And so um, I'm sure it's probably eased, eased your schedule up a little bit, being able to not, not be in training doing all this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And just not doing the editing part also, which takes quite that's a bit a big of time. Part of it. Yeah, that's, that's a, yeah, I don't think people realize it, yeah. that, uh, you know, if they don't do this kind of work, that the editing takes so much time because it all looks just pretty seamless. Yeah. And, you know, especially, you know, his operation, very low tech, but <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's yeah. true. I mean, I can only manage, I do, I do editing myself, but it's mm -hmm. like two minute videos, Yeah, yeah. like doing like 14 but even to, that, to you know, 20 minutes. Takes, like, I don't know. It yeah. seems like you're in there for like an hour. I don't know yeah. if the whole time is right. spent editing. So you can not. imagine uh -huh, how long uh -huh. it takes like 30 <laughs> minutes to edit a 30 minute video, but right. That's what I'm saying. Are you, so now that now you're, you're doing ortho ortho spine probably all things ortho i imagine right are you have you are you mostly a spinal surgeon with your fellowship or do you still do a lot of variety i, I just mostly just spine now like 99.9 yeah. .9 percent when i first got into practice I, I did a trauma call so i took a lot of trauma level one trauma center level two trauma center mm. uh did a lot of that for two years and just gave that up the lifestyle is pretty crazy for that so yeah i bet oh did doing trauma yeah this is going to sound like a joke, but it's a, it's a serious question. So we've talked to some other orthopedic surgeons and, you know, they're talking a lot about like femurs and like great big bones and how hard it is to move those bones. Right. And that's why the stereotype is that ortho is really strong and works out a lot. What is it like with the spine? Because that's so much smaller and more delicate, I would imagine. Yeah. Is there I don't know. I'm not force. in medicine, so this might be a <laughs> stupid question, yeah. but. No, it's a good that, question. That's such a great question. It's. It's a little bit of both. So when, when we're performing fusions of the spine, we're putting these pedicle screws in. We're, oh, we're, yeah. we're um, sure. you know, maneuvering or um, reducing certain parts of the spine or slip forward or jump the sets, things like that. That does require, require quite a bit of force, but majority of spine surgery is very meticulous and very precise and very fine type surgery. So... Um, but yeah. that's what I enjoy. It's, it's a good balance between both because one part of the surgery, I'm pounded in a cage from an A-lift going <laughs> to the front of the patient's belly, then doing a decompression, you know, have to operate mm -hmm. a little bit slower, more meticulous. Right. I've always been, mm -hmm. I'm always fascinated by the, the fact that you can come at spine surgery from different places, right? So you can come to it from the neurosurgery yeah. side and from the orthopedic side. Do you see a, I guess, what is the... Is there like a, a technique difference? Is what what is the difference? So I mean, I'm sure you have colleagues that come from the neurosurgery. Yeah, is there side a debate of... among ortho people that trained in different ways of which way is better? Yeah, there, there's <laughs> always a debate. And it, with, with spine surgery, you can ask ten different surgeons you know, how to treat a certain pathology, and you may get ten different answers. That's the reason why I like oh, it. There's yeah. a lot of variability <laughs> in the field, yeah, yeah. but um, it's I think it's going towards a combined. Orthopedic, orthopedic and neurosurgery residency or, or fellowship, I would say, or training, because a lot of neurosurgeons will do a spine surgery fellowship afterwards. So in my fellowship, oh, we had okay. um, we had a few neurosurgeons that trained with us. And part, as part of our staff, we had probably like four or five neurosurgeons on staff that I worked with. So um, the training is very similar. I do 
think uh, neurosurgeons are way better at um, anything inside of the spinal cord, like an intradural tumor mm -hmm. in, the, the, mm -hmm. in the brain. We, we don't do any brain work. So um, I'm from right. the base of the brain stem all the way down to the sacrum, pelvis. Um, otherwise, it goes, it goes to neurosurgery. Gotcha. Now, I want to go back and and talk about you know, your where you came from. Yeah, your 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 path to medicine yeah. because you, it seems uh you you come from a a very different background um than than probably a lot of people and I think a lot of people could learn from from your experience and so yeah you know, where did you grow up and what got you set on the path to medicine? Yeah, so I, I grew up in Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, that's my my father was in prior military and that's where he retired and that's where we ended up. And my path was uh, certainly quite the journey. Um, no one in my family is a medical doctor. So really I had to figure this whole path out my, on my own. Um, but not, my parents both are kind of low income, uh, grew up in a lot of poverty in Louisiana. Uh, my dad's multiple family members, including my dad spent time in prison. My dad joined a gang when he was young and spent time in jail. Um, my little brother went to jail for armed robbery when I was young. He was 15 years old. Um, my little sister did several years in prison. Um, since I've been young, my mom has been in and out of jail my whole life. I and mean, she was actually shot. And she's a uh, T10 quadriplegic uh, from a oh, gunshot wow. wound, which is when I was in medical school, she got shot um, mm. from her drug addiction. So just growing up in that type of environment, um, really challenging to <laughs> escape all yeah. of that and then get to where I'm at. But it was actually a medical magnet program that I went to in high school, luckily that I got accepted to, that introduced the field of medicine to me. And that, that program is the reason why I'm a doctor today. So I go around and just share my story to students. And that's hence to talk this evening to my old college, just letting them know uh, kind of a little bit about my, little bit about my path and how I got to this point. So how, how old were you when you, when you came across that magnet program? Oh, I was, I was in 11th, um, 11th grade, so 16. Probably 15, 16. What prompted you to apply to it? Did you have a teacher that pushed you towards it, or what? How did you come about doing yeah, that? Honestly, I'm, I'm not, I don't really recall. I just remember being in the program. Um, my best friend, uh, he's a cardiothoracic anesthesiologist. We kind of stuck together. I think he got into mm -hmm. the program. I got into it, um, and he's a physician now. We both kind of made it out of uh, that, that that environment. Yeah, that's remarkable. Thank you. And so, and you went. So I, I guess I don't, I'm not sure what uh, these programs are because I always think of when when I when I have talked to or know you know doctors who are who are in the military usually it's like you get into med school and then you meet a recruiter and they say oh here you want to you know do this you know military scholarship and then do your years of service but you you got into the military right out of high school. It sounds like. Yeah. And I, I didn't even graduate high school when I went to boot camp for the military. Uh, my, my high oh, school really? was on a quarter system. And due to that quarter system, I was able to complete all of my credits. So midway between my senior year of high school, they let me go to boot camp. For the, I joined the military at 17. And then I came back and walked with my graduating class in my military uniform. Um, but that program essentially just gave me the exposure because I, I don't remember YouTube at that point, but I'm pretty sure that would have maybe influenced my decision if I saw another physician who looked like me and came yeah. from a similar environment to that. I'd say, hey, I want to do that too. But um, that program just gave me the idea, the possibility that, wow, this is something that I can really accomplish if I just kind of stuck stuck to it. And so you were you were eight eight years in the in the U.S. Air Force, and what were you doing during those years I, I, with regard to medicine? Yeah, I did a number of different things. I was an EMT. Um, I was an LVN, licensed vocational nurse, and medical technician um, deployed to Iraq in 2005 as a medic, uh, so mostly a medical field. I, I knew going in I wanted to do something medical. My whole goal was to go through the military, have them pay for my school, then get out and go to medical school. So that was my whole goal the whole time. Oh, okay. All right. And so you spent, uh, you did a tour in, in Iraq, you said in 2005 yes. and that what, what about this experience 
I guess did it did it did it clue you into certain parts of medicine or away from certain parts or you know how, how did that shape you know what what area of medicine you gravitated towards? Uh, it probably just got me more inter- interested in the, the field of medicine in itself. Uh, we did a lot of orthopedics yeah. overseas, a lot of uh, X fixes, uh, fracture fixation. There's a lot of gunshot wounds, blast injuries, um, kind of you name it. So we we saw a lot of trauma, and um, just kind of yeah. gravitated towards that. And this is all, but this is all happening. I mean, you're 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 quite young at this point, right? I mean, because you haven't yeah. actually been to med school yet. No, you you probably. I'm sure you had some kind of medic training yep. uh, just to be able to do the job. But um, I, I'm trying to you know, put myself in, in the, 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 uh, the mindset that I was in as like a you know, 22 year old. I'm not sure how old you were, but was, seeing all of 20, that. Yeah, 19 or 20. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering, I'm seeing a parallel. Like you, do, you weren't in the military, but, um, but we, he had cancer mm. when we were in our 20s and then you know you had this experience when you were in your young 20s and it's kind of both of those could have the you know byproduct i guess of you know when you're that young you have that sense of invincibility mm-hmm. but when you get something like cancer or when you see something like a war zone and all the injuries that come from that like you know that can kind of erode that sense of invincibility and and kind of give you a a different appreciation for sort of the fragility of life and yeah, how, how vulnerable you are. Did you experience that at all or, or was it the opposite? Like you have to kind of just shut all that out and stay focused. Uh, It was a combination of both. Uh, I was deployed to one of the most attacked bases in Iraq at that time. It was called Mortarville uh, due to the amount of mortars that we attacks that our base uh, received at that time. Um, I think coming back, they said we survived, I think it was a little over a hundred enemy attacks. There was several times where there was rockets kind of going right over my head. Um, I mean, just being in that type wow. of environment uh, really makes you appreciate life. And uh, and but you know, all of my military experience, including that, really prepared me and has led to my success. I, I think certainly has contributed to so. And and so, when you left the the military after eight years. Did you have a a, a degree? Uh, because you went straight from there to 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 medical school. Is that right? Uh, so I, I'm just I'm just trying to think how it works in terms of like college, yeah. then med school. Then yeah, this the is really breaking your brain. <laughs> well, uh, no, it's not. I'm just, He's I'm really just trying, fixated on trying this. to understand. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's a little confusing. A new yeah, absolutely. Time frame. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually went. I did most of my college, my undergrad, while I was active duty. Um, it's this is very yeah. uncommon. Uh, but when I worked, I was in the military as a medic. So when I, when I worked in the um, evening time at the hospital, I would get off work at maybe seven o'clock in the morning. And I would go to school from eight to one. And then I would sleep for two or three hours and then go back to work at six. God. So and I, I did that and for six years and did oh my 99% gosh. of my undergraduate degree. And when I got out, I have one or had one or maybe one semester left. And I finished that and applied yeah. to medical school. You are some kind of a superhuman, no, I, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, no, it's just like, not a lot of sleep. Yeah. We know how much we enjoy sleep. And, you know, <laughs> it's I just like I have no right to complain about any of my minor inconveniences of my very cushy suburban life now that I hear all of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, was, it was definitely challenging, but um, it really just, um, you know, I was really persistent. Well, it probably is. It, get, it gives yeah. you uh, some perspective on especially when you when you would end up going through more difficult time in your life, uh, particularly orthopedic surgery residency, which I'm sure wasn't a walk in the park as well. You're like, yeah, um, if you had to do one again, which would you do? Go to war oh, wow. or go to orthopedic surgery residency? Oh, oh, man, if that's, you had to pick. That's a great question. I would probably. How much time do I have to spend at war? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Um, it's uh, they bring their own challenges. I'm sure. Yeah. But, Yep. So, so you, uh, how does it work? I guess when you're, when you go into the military at the age that you did, was there, whenever you got out, was it like, okay, we will pay for your med school now, or because of the years of service that you have put in, how does that work? Well, they, they pay for a portion of it. Um, you get what's called okay. a post 9-11 MGI bill. Um, they pay for all of my undergrad because I was on active duty besides the, uh, the one semester, mm-hmm. but 
uh, for medical school, they pay up to the highest state school. So I went to a really expensive medical school at Georgetown, where it's uh, 100, about $100,000 a year for the tuition, the housing. It's crazy. Um, That's but, crazy. Um, <clears throat> they didn't cover all of that. And I still came out of medical school about $500,000 in debt because of that. So, oh, man. Yeah. Wow. What, what was it about Georgetown? What, what got you there? Um, I actually did a post program there uh, at Georgetown. That's what brought yeah. me to Georgetown. And plus, Georgetown has a really high rate of um, accepting or getting students into the field of orthopedic surgery. In my class, there was about, oh, probably nice. about 25 to 30 students who went into orthopedics that year, my year. Wow. But usually it's about 20 students per year, like a high percentage. That's why. That's what nuts. is it? What is yeah. it about Georgetown? Maybe because of the, <laughs> what are the they student doing loans. Over there? Maybe. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you got to pay back those student it. loans. That's right. <laughs> Figure out a way to do it somehow. Oh, uh, my goodness. Hard to do that going so you, you were, family medicine. <laughs> Right. Uh, yeah, I mean that's that, that's part of one of one of the big problems in in healthcare in this country, right? Yeah. Is is because that student loan debt. It I I think it really does push people into certain away from certain careers and toward others, and that's a whole whole thing we could talk about. Yeah. But um, it so it does so you were it sounds like day one of med school you were like ortho like you knew like that's since that that, that influenced your decision on where you went to med school. I'm sure you were. All for ortho, right? The whole way. Uh, day one of coming out my mom's uh, wound. No, uh, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was. I, I pretty much knew something surgical. I just had to figure out. I was yeah, looking yeah. at ENT, kind of looked at plastics a little bit. Um, and and ophthalmology, right? Yeah, like I was I'm actually naturally. I actually didn't rotate with ophthalmology. I'm pretty sure. Ah, see, we could we could have had. Yeah, no. uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. It's also a very like meticulous. It, it is. I, I think you would have, you would have been a good ophthalmologist. Yeah. I, think, <laughs> I think you would have gotten into doing those uh, corneal transplants yeah. and cataract surgery and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's all fine detail. Your muscles would have atrophied. Yeah. I mean, though. look at the difference so yeah. just, between you two. I'm just saying it's, it's, you know, you, you kind of, uh, you know, you've, Become the body type of that's the, right. Of but the your hands, you're doing. those are precious, <laughs> yeah. precious hands. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't, didn't um, rotate in ophthalmology, but that's one of the specialties that I just didn't have the opportunity to look at. I think that's pretty common. Like, you know, it's not yeah, a lot of med school right. ophthalmology I mean, exposure. Honestly, the only reason I'm probably an ophthalmologist is because the my my mentor that was assigned to me day just one random. of med school was an ophthalmologist. Just happened to be an ophthalmologist and. But I, I do remember asking her, okay, what is ophthalmology exactly? Yeah. So it's like, I, I even had no idea. <laughs> yeah. um, I think most people know orthopedic surgery. Um, but, uh, and, and so you, you finished med school uh, at, uh, at Georgetown. And then w were you sweating out a, a, a spot in the match? Was, it, was that a stressful time for you? Ortho is pretty competitive, Ortho's right? Ortho is very competitive. Okay. No, I, I did pretty well. In I did really, really well in medical school and on my yeah. board. So I, I knew that. Um, I was going to match somewhere. Get a good shot. Um, ended up getting, yeah. I think, 15 interviews. So interviewed like all over. Um, oh, and... good. Nice. Again, I mean, he's very humble about it, but I, I'll just say it for you. This is a rare specimen of a human being. Like, <laughs> I don't think he, he needed to be worried. Uh, yeah, well, you never totally know. Agree. Yeah, it's very competitive. Like, like you said, <laughs> some people apply to, I applied to 90 programs um, during my God, year. That's so lot. That's, yes. that's so many. And that's expensive too. Yeah. Yeah, it right, is. Right. All so, the application yeah. fees. Yep. Um, and so you ended up in San Antonio. Yep. At my, really in my number one location. I rotated here just because I, I was in the military here in San Antonio with the college. Just decided it was a good place to come back and practice uh, medicine and matched. Oh, oh, so you did a lot of some of your, um, your, your training, your training, your um, military training. Yes. In San Antonio. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. They have the big, the big, uh, yeah, base, a base there. That's right. Yep. You can tell that we are very ignorant about well, well, I, I how grew up, a career in the military. Well, that's unfolds. why. <laughs> that's why I feel like people will learn uh, about this and yeah. kind of you know get to know like what that's all about. And yeah. and it's did you what was your what were your thoughts of of moving to Texas? I grew up so we both grew up in Texas. Yeah, I was in the Houston area, more of a, a suburban upbringing. Kristen mm -hmm. was in the middle, the of, middle nowhere. of nowhere. Oh yeah, where is that? <laughs> Uh, it was a little town called Dublin. Dublin it's okay. like halfway between Dallas and Abilene, a little ways off I twenty. Okay. If that means anything Classic to you. Classic small Texas town. Very like Friday Night Light. Oh, they didn't have situation. a they didn't have an arts program, but they had no. a giant football stadium. <laughs> I see. Yeah. So yeah, you know, classic that's, Texas. Kind of 
That's kind yeah. Of, kind of how it goes. <laughs> right. Where, um, did you have any desire to, because, you know, once you finished training, you, uh, you stayed in Texas. Did you have any desire to go back to Shreveport or anywhere in Louisiana? No, no, not Shreveport. They, they tried to recruit me, um, LSU yeah. Shreveport, but I, I just couldn't convince my wife to go back there. It, uh, that was not happening. No. Nope. Uh, yeah. And so it was uh, um, Plano, Texas. Is that where you're at now? No, I'm actually in San Antonio, Texas. I, I was in Plano for my fellowship at Texas Back Institute. Oh, yeah. oh that's right. That's yeah. where you did the San Antonio the fellowship. Yeah. So I want to talk about that because I don't know if you, I don't know why you would know this. So you probably don't know this, but I oh, have did? had a, a cervical disc replacement. Oh. oh, yeah. Okay. And as I understand it, the Texas Back Institute is very important player in that field yes right? right yes absolutely yeah that, that's where disc replacements first started uh, i think dr okay. blumenthal is a one of the first people in america in the u.s to place a disc replacement it, and those guys all taught me uh, how to do them and that's kind of what i brought here to san antonio for my practice nice well i gotta yeah. say i am a big fan yeah you did well <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, great. Yes, I was having all sorts of trouble. It was awful. And then, you know, had the surgery. And once I was all recovered from that, then it's like nothing ever happened. That's awesome. But let me ask you this, uh, Webb. Uh, do you advise your, your patients who have a cer cervical disc replacement to do um, uh, 10 minutes of chest compressions like three weeks later? Oh. <laughs> it wasn't three weeks. Well, if you, I guess if you have to. I mean... Shortly after. <laughs> <laughs> do what you got to do. Yeah, you got to do what you got to <laughs> do. Terrible timing on my part. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. That's, that's a good lucky good thing about disc replacements, quicker recovery. Yeah, you were you did recover very quickly. Like it was. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to. Yeah, give me credit for what I earned <laughs> here, but <laughs> but yes, compared to something like a fusion yeah. or or something like that, yeah, I am. That's why I'm a big fan because it is. It's like nothing ever happened. You can't even tell. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's take a let's take a, a short break and we'll come right back. Hey everybody, old news but good news. We're coming back to the Irvine Improv on Sunday, March 24th for our show, Wife and Death. That's right, we're going to talk about the time you died. And came back to life. It'll be a tragic comic, multimedia, memoir, stage show extravaganza. And some of my characters might show up too. You'll just have to come and check it out and see for yourself. To buy tickets, click the link in the description below or you can visit glockenflecken.com slash live. We'll see you there. Hey, Kristen. What's up? I got to tell you about Precision. Tell me. This is really cool. It's the first ever EHR integrated infectious disease AI platform. Oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah. It's for any specific patient. It'll automatically highlight better antibiotic regimens. Okay. So it can maybe help you treat the patient better and then also gets at this antibiotic stewardship issue. Exactly. It hmm. basically empowers clinicians to save more lives while reducing burnout, just making their jobs easier. Nice. To see a demo, go to precision.com slash KKH. That's precision spelled with an X instead of an E. So P-R-X-C-I-S-I-O-N dot com slash KKH. All right, we are back with Dr. Antonio Webb, uh, who many of you have probably seen on YouTube. Uh, he's got fantastic uh, videos um, where you, a lot of educational stuff. I noticed you're, you're, you're doing a lot of, cause I mean, I know from, from my experience as an ophthalmologist that anytime something vaguely eye related shows up in the news, like I'm, mm. I'm going to hear about yeah. it. Right. I'm sure it's probably the same way for you. you probably get tagged in all kinds of stuff. Like, like, uh, I know just recently they have this, uh, the Dr. Death, mm -hmm. uh, TV show, yep. right. That's surrounding about the uh, nurse, you know, yeah, yeah. About the neurosurgeon. Mm -hmm. That was uh that was probably a hot topic um in the uh in the spine world when that when that whole thing came out, I imagine. Yeah, it still is. It's one of those things that um certainly is um I mean it's a that's a sad story. Just um you yeah. know, for those who haven't really heard about it, it's just this neurosurgeon who kind of just somehow just passed through training and was able to get out and practice and I mean things like that happen. Um, as a result, yeah, so it is, it's unfortunate. It is scary. Yeah. It is scary. It, was that in Texas? Did that it happen? was, yeah. Dallas, Fort Worth. Oh, gotcha. When well, you say right. passed through training, meaning like he skipped it. Well, no, I mean, he, he was he was able to complete training. Okay. But 
the question is like, should he have been able to based on his? Because he was no good, and what, he right, like what the the yeah, just his performance, the amount of surgeries and, that he performed right. compared to other people. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so then when it didn't go well once he was yeah. in practice, I take it. Well, yeah, I mean, given the uh, nickname Doctor Death. Well, to, uh, you've never. I I am aware. Of right. it, I've got a but podcast I've not to show you. Seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like listening and watching stories like that. You're, like not, a tr- you're not a true crime type of no, person. No, I oh. want something that's going to be either well, make was... me learn or make me happy. <laughs> that's what I want. Well, then I think this is probably not the thing no, for you. No, that's why I haven't seen it. <laughs> but it was it was a, a fascinating uh, um, look into a lot of things in medicine, and yeah. it's a terrible story, but. Uh, um, but well, I, hopefully there's some like change happening because of the attention that it brought. I mean, I, there, there has been, I mean, I don't know what the, all the systemic issues that led to that yeah. particular case. Cause it's so out of, out there, right? Like yeah. that just, that kind of thing doesn't happen yeah. all the time, you right. know, but, um, yeah, hopefully it's not, but I'm sure you're probably tired of talking about yeah, it. We got, Dr. We're on a tangent here. I don't know. It's, it's, it's one of those things that, uh, yeah, I mean, I love talking about stuff like that. I mean, it's, how do you, how do you get your ideas though for content? Like what are your, um, do you pay attention to what people are asking you about in the comments? Is that, is that where, cause that's where I get a lot of my ideas as well. Yeah. A little bit of both people reach out to me. Hey, Dr. Webb, you talk about this or, um, you know, hot topics, a lot of the sports injuries that are going on uh, as it relates to yeah. orthopedic surgery. So, um, I have a question just out of my own selfish interest, yeah. which is, do you see a lot of hypermobility? Uh, some, yeah. A lot of patients with uh, EDS or uh, certain uh, disorders um, of their uh, musculoskeletal system. Yeah, we see quite a bit of that. That's what led to my cervical disc replacement. Oh. So I was just curious if you do things on that. <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> and if not, would you please? <laughs> if you're open to requests. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what yeah. we're doing I here. I actually had another patient reach out and say, <laughs> ask me to talk about EDS and as it relates to spine surgery. Yeah. So. Well, that's an area too that's, that's becoming more, um, more talked about. I feel like. I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I, I I certainly see a lot more people mentioning it when we get and emails. Do you think that's and... just because you're married to me, though? Now you know. Well, I don't know. I I think there's certain diseases that are just we're just learning more about. Yeah. And I I, I feel like EDS was something that we certainly learned a, a little bit about in med school, but it wasn't wasn't really fleshed out and talked about a lot. Right. Well, because no one we understood it. Don't really understand it. Right. No, there's probably a lot of things like yeah. that. So. Well, and now, I mean, it's not good that long COVID is happening, but, but one maybe silver lining for people like me is long COVID has a lot, uh, has a lot in common with, um, you know, certain types of EDS and there's overlap there. Yeah. yeah. So I think that now that we're studying long COVID, we may learn more about things like EDS. And Well, I want to, I wanted to, you, you did, send us a couple of stories uh, yeah. uh web about um that, that I, I like it whenever you don't send the actual story you just like a little, oh, yeah. a little teaser so here's <laughs> so tell us why you stopped wearing cowboy boots i'd love to hear about this yeah so uh wearing cowboy boots is kind of a thing in texas so you know if, yes. you, if you rotate in texas as a medical student um at most programs you're going to catch some resident fellow attending um, in cowboy boots so and for me, for yeah. being from Louisiana, I just, you know, it's not something we did in Louisiana. We didn't wear cowboy boots. So, right. but, so it was a real uh, eye opener coming into Texas and doing my training here. And as part of our graduation gift as residents, uh, they give us cowboy boots with uh, our program name on it. So it's, it's like a huge thing here. But um, like actual cowboy mm-hmm. boots that fit your feet. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It has the program name the year we graduated graduation wow. gift so nice boots yeah in texas that's like a very nice gift a, it, it is, is. Yeah. i haven't Absolutely. worn them yet but um I have, <laughs> I have some other boots that i did wear they they were from my training they were kind of beat up and you know uh-huh. i just didn't want to get rid of them but i have a patient that came into my office and she, she's african-american also she was like dr webb you mind if you won't get mad if i just give you a little feedback would you i said no not at all <laughs> <laughs> i said well what do you uh what, what's up she was like, you got to do something with those boots. I, I just, you too, you're too <laughs> successful to be wearing boots like that. But they were, they were beat up. It was time to get rid of them. So my wife had yeah. been pounding me about, hey, why are you still wearing those? So, so I, 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 <laughs> so you re- retired the yeah, old Yeah, I just, yeah. I haven't felt the same. And uh, I, I haven't worn boots since then. 
So she may be a little self-conscious. Oh, well. so, uh, yeah, sure. So. You just got to get some fancy attending booths. That's yeah, all it I know. is. That's, yeah, that's like, I want to go look for some. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you're the reason why that was the residency gift. Like, for the love of God, please get new boots. Here you go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's always interesting to see um, just orthopedic surgeons just operating in their boots in here in Texas. So. <laughs> no, yeah. I, and I, I will say, I haven't had a, I mean, I, I grew up in Texas. I lived there till I was 22. Um, I don't think I ever had a pair of cowboy boots. No, but you were a city boy. You grew up in city, That's Texas. It's not, a... not the same. <laughs> yeah. Not at all. Yep. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I, so I'm, he I'm... didn't even know what a skunk smelled like. We moved to New Hampshire oh. when we were like all right. 20, now you're just making me two look or three. Bad. And that was the first time he'd ever smelled. He was like, what is that awful smell? Yeah. And I was like, are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> That's a skunk. That was a, that was a low point for me in terms of, <laughs> of, of being an authentic Texan. So it's, yeah, that was, that was rough. Yeah. He's a city yeah, boy. A lot of, a lot of skunks right. around yeah, right. here. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're also in an airplane crash. Oh, I wasn't in an airplane Ooh. crash. No. Oh, you weren't. No, okay. this is, um, during my residency, you know, we take a lot of trauma call um, as orthopedic surgery residents, always oh. in the ER. I remember uh, one particular time um, getting called down to the ER for a plane crash. I was like, holy shit, plane crash. Oh. So, but I went yeah. down to the ER. The guy was talking. He was just moving. Of course, he had a few broken bones and kind of banged up every part of his body. But a couple minutes later, his wife walked in and started yelling at him. Said, I told you not yeah. to go up there. I told you not to take that plane up there. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, what is going on here? So, yeah, he was just getting a second degree from his wife about flying his plane, um, a little small, two seater probably. Yeah. And ended up crashing. So she just went off on him. I thought that was, I just broke down crying or laughing. Yeah. Should always yeah. listen to the wife. Yeah. She, was, she came about. in yelling. I was like, man, she sounds like my wife <laughs> yelling at me. <laughs> Well, if you guys just wouldn't do stupid stuff, we wouldn't have to yell. Yeah, no, that's yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that 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 yeah, he's got a lot of business because guys do yeah. stupid stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's, true. that's yeah. <laughs> how, how often do you are you do you take trauma call anymore? Are you are you totally done with kind of heading down to the emergency department and in the middle of the night? Yeah, or is that still part of your yeah, job? Yeah, not any like official trauma call i gave that up that's like i said that's a rough lifestyle just being up all sorts of the night and i have three little ones three kids so it's um i, I gotta be home oh, with my yeah. kids and um, i just do yeah. call for my my practice my group and okay. also just uh, random er phone calls from doctors that i know okay yeah i didn't know if because i'm in a private practice up here and we we do cover the emergency department of you know four different community hospitals mm -hmm. so we do occasionally have to go in um, but, uh, it's definitely nowhere near like the level one trauma center yep. type of type of life. Yeah. You know, that, that can be rough. Yeah. Oh yeah. But, so it's, and, and you started, uh, so what year did you finish training? I finished in 2019. So you like, right okay. when the pandemic started, <laughs> yeah. you were like yes. starting your career, basically wow. you were like done with training. So what was that like? What was that transition? Like, um, did you have patients to see? <laughs> Actually, yeah, I, I did. It was, it was a very interesting time just because, you know, new out into practice and then you're trying to build your practice, trying to meet people and you're going to their office. They're standing back 20 feet from you and you just tell them, no, I'm, I'm COVID free. Can I come in and yeah. introduce myself? <laughs> um, but it was a really interesting time. Um, you know, I had some unfortunate events where I had hospital that, you know, as surgeons, we get guarantees. I'm not sure if that's like that for ophthalmology where you get income guarantees your first year oh yeah it's, yeah yeah okay. it's, it's it's kind of the case yeah yeah exactly. so i had one hospital um uh, was supposed to give me an income guarantee for this huge amount of money as a new spine surgeon in town and within mm -hmm. two weeks of graduating i think it's like two or three weeks like the ceo called me i had just scrubbed out of a trauma case and fellowship and he said uh hey man i'm sorry we're not gonna be able to do your offer anymore because of all the COVID." so i had <sighs> a I had a rough kind of scramble trying to yeah. find new offers and jobs. It was rough, uh, but got through it though. I'm sure a lot of people are probably in the same boat yeah. too. Like that's yeah, yeah, and that's not the time you want to feel like you don't have an income when there's a global pandemic. Oh, yeah. yeah, but it, everybody was affected exactly. at that time. You know, even if you <laughs> yeah. were in practice, exactly. private practice, you can't do certain procedures. But 
Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, we shut down. Yeah. We got, we, we shut down all of our locations. Um, we just, we had to, you know, and, and it was, we had to let go all our staff. Fortunately, we were able to, to hire them back again eventually. But, um, yeah, it was, I mean, that was when I joined TikTok basically and started making video content. I was was like, I I was, you know, no one's going to ask me to go help in the hospital as an ophthalmologist. Like I would just get in the way. So, um i was like had all this free time on my hands and so i started making videos and that's awesome one thing led to another and started you know are you on tiktok by the way or are you just doing yeah, a YouTube? little tiktok tiktok is um yeah okay. yeah a little bit but yeah not to the level you are it's a good way to get your stuff out yeah. there it's uh you know the little short short segments help uh help uh you know yeah you can you can create an audience pretty quickly on yeah. well, and especially if you're you're trying to talk to the general population. You know that's right. a really good place to go because it does have such a broad reach. Yeah. Trying to trying to teach them all about bones. Yeah, back pain. Everybody Speak- has back pain at some point. Spe- yeah. <laughs> so. Speaking of that, so I, I I did a little thing here um, that I thought w- would be fun to go through with you. So I'm sure you've heard this joke before. Like uh, people like say like Web MD yeah. yeah. to you, like you know that's. <laughs> Right. Yeah. That's I'm sure that's like hackneyed and old at this yeah. point. But so we're gonna so we're gonna do that. that. Oh, we're gonna play on that joke okay. here. Um, I so so we're gonna play a little game called Web MD. Right. Uh, basically, what I did was I I I just searched on Web MD the word bones. Mm. And I want you to try to guess what do you think like in the top ten search results are for, for for searching for bones on web, on web MD, MD specifically mm. yes i would probably say the top one is uh maybe femur it, it, um, femur's on there okay. yes <laughs> yes uh, what about femur? erection <laughs> no look people probably do it they probably search it that way uh, <laughs> good idea i think that's a different web md oh, right. I, I yeah, think, that's another website uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah okay <laughs> I tell you, I tell you one bone spurs. Oh yeah, yeah, bone spurs. That came up a yeah. lot. Tell us what bone spurs are. Uh, bone spurs. It's a um, it's a process where you have two bones that are, um, say, for instance, a patient has arthritis. It's a process where those two bones are rubbed against each other and it forms extra bone. So these bone spurs can ha- cause a lot of issues in spine surgery. We, we deal with them all the time. Kind of like a bone callus. Right, like if you think about your fingers or yeah. something getting a callus from rubbing up like yeah. guitar players and stuff. I guess I always think of I just I think of bone spurs mainly for like the feet. It just makes me think of spurs but, on the boots. Like mm-hmm. speaking of cowboy right. boots, well, yeah, <laughs> right. But but you can get bone spurs anywhere where there's that friction, right? So I'm are you what do you do for bone spurs in the spine? Well, it really depends on what's going on, but in general, it's usually pressing on a nerve or a portion of the spinal cord. So we try to remove it. Um, that's usually uh, take yeah. the pressure off of it with a cage Just or shave it off. A, take a file to it or what? like a rotor rooter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, rotor rooter to the spine. Oh, yeah. yeah, just you know? clean it out. Just yeah. like that. Um. Okay. Let's see what else. So here's here's a nut some more. Well, what do you? No, think? you're supposed. To, he's yeah, guessing. I, I, well, I'm just, yeah. Some other ones. Yeah, trying to help out here. For bone. What else? Do you think? Um, Patella is probably for bone. Uh, commonly searched. Um, Patella. Oh, I know that. Patella. That's your knee. Or, or now it does have to say it would be like bone is in the title. Oh, okay. Of the thing. Okay. Uh, right. Bone health. So okay. So not bone. type of bones necessarily. Just they uh, they not necessarily bone stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like bone. Tell me about um, bones. Strengthening your bones. Osteoporosis. Bone health is probably in there. Yes. Osteoporosis is a big one. Yeah. Um, bone fractures. That's the one that's where you get up. like holes in your bone, right? Osteoporosis. Like they're. Yeah. It's like the de- like Swiss lo- cheese. loss of density. <laughs> bone densitometry is on that list, which goes really? along with, with, you know, osteoporosis. Is that the measurement so, of the bone density? Uh-huh. Okay. That's right. Yeah. yeah she's she's yeah. good. Right? <laughs> She's picked up a few things hey, along yeah. the way. You know? I've, I've been along for this whole ride. Yeah. I've been so. married to medicine <laughs> yeah. for a while. So you know, go. she's, she's, got, she's got it down. She also hears me, you know, talking to myself as the orthopedic surgeon from time there to time. So, yeah, yeah, but you don't sound as smart as he does. I don't. No, yeah. I do. Man. All right, here, here. <laughs> <laughs> All right here's, here's one that you would never guess was on this list. Red bone marrow. Oh. Oh. Okay. Red bone marrow. Is there a... Other kind of bone marrow? Yes. There is. What else Good is question. there? Good question. I don't remember that. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, there's a couple of different types of bone marrow. So is that like white blood cell, red blood cell? It's just uh, part of your bone that makes the red blood cells and all of your hemo, um, like uh, the uh, um, all of your cells kind of in your body, red blood cells mostly that are created yeah. in that part of the bone. Does the yellow marrow Hemato- also make Hemato- red Hemato- cells? Uh, that's more of kind of a Hemato- fatty poesis. adipose tissue. Um, oh. Yeah, kind of storage, storage fat and things like that. Okay, yeah. gotcha. You were trying to sound uh, impressive. I, I, I thought of the word yeah, for like go. making. That's what I was thinking of. That's what I think. That's what it, right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's you know, I know a few few long words that aren't related to ophthalmology. <laughs> um, all right, all right. How about this? How about the talus bone? Mm. That's on the Ooh, list. What's that? Yeah, yeah it's a the, the talus or the it, it's a bone in your ankle. Uh, it forms the articulation between your tib. It's right on top of your uh, under your tibia. It forms the ankle joints, part of the uh, one of the bones in your foot. It forms your ankle joint. Okay. Yeah. Is that the one that cracks every time I walk on a stair? <laughs> um, <laughs> you're, she's popping and cracking all over I the do. place. You can hear me coming down the stairs because every single step, it oh, yeah. <laughs> my ankles crack. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised that that one's on the list, though. Uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't have thought that would have been on the list. Right, I, it's it's kind of surprising, and then the, the other one, uh, bone cancer. Okay. Obviously, yeah. mm. people are interested in that. And do you do you do a lot of oncology? Do you deal with uh, very anything there with regard to the bones? Yeah, very little. I just just saw a lady t- uh, today in my office that um, I sent her for some additional testing. Her something looks a little uh, questionable in her bones uh, mm. that I thought. So yeah. uh, to me, it looks like cancer, but we'll see when she comes back. So you might do it's like not like official screening, but you might see things that yes, like that are suspicious ref- and then refer, refer things to you, thinking yeah. exactly. you know, yeah, like, exactly. right, yeah. Um. Well, that was WebMD. Yeah. yeah. There you I go. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, uh, b- before you go, uh, Web, I definitely want to talk about um, some of the things that you're working on recently. I know you uh, are releasing an online social media course for doctors. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about this? Yeah. So um, I came up with this idea. I've actually had it for a few years. It's, um, the course is going to be called Social Media for Doctors. This is um, really driven by getting reached. I'm pretty sure you get contacted all the time too from other physicians, healthcare providers that are just saying, Hey, how can I get started on social media? For me, the social yeah. media has really kind of um, um, accelerated my practice, you know, out of nine, there's supposed to be 10 spine surgeons in my group. I'm number one, number two, every month in terms of performance and um, uh, productivity. So, and I, I credit that really to just uh, number one, just doing, really good work here in town and developing a re- uh, reputation for myself uh, as well as social media. So I get contacted all the time from, from providers. Um, I had a CEO of a pain clinic in Oklahoma who just reached out to me and said, Hey, can you speak to our f- physicians about social media? They would like to kind of uh, expand that front. So I decided it was a good idea to put all that to a really a online format where I can just provide that for providers it just goes over how to monetize, how to grow, how to market yourself, the do's and don'ts of social media. Um, so yeah. that's coming out. Uh, that's hopefully, important. Uh, so, the World Social Media Day is in June of this year, so we're going to release it that day. Oh, nice. oh, we have a World Social Media yeah. Day now. See, he's better at it than you. That's we good. didn't even know that. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, You're that's ahead. in June. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> so. Let's look out for that. And that's social media for doctors.com yes. is, is where you can find more information on that. Uh, and then I, you also have a, um, a foundation. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah it's called the, the web. What family, do you do with that? Uh, it's called the web family foundation. Um, I started it because of the, as uh, a study came out and I believe it was in 2014 that showed that there were more black males in medical school. And I think it was 1978 than there were in 2014. So, um, it's really to just increase diversity and also just, um, encourage kids from my community or similar communities as mine to think about medicine. So I have a summer mentorship program that I do every year where I select, um, a few students to come hang out with me in surgery and also clinic. And we do some cadaver labs, saw bones labs, really just exposing them to the field of medicine, very similar to the program that I went to in high school that got me interested in medicine. So, um, 
And I think um, also in June Very of this cool. year, we're having a huge health event where about two to 300 students from surrounding areas are going to be in attendance. Uh, some cardiologists there, um, orthopedic surgeons, neurosurgeons, uh, all types of specialties just cool. to expose kids to various uh, fields in um, medicine. Um, I'll see if we can get an ophthalmologist so cool. in there. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah saying. We, we, we need that. <laughs> Yeah, and then um, the big other thing is just donated a um, big um, uh, scholarship amount to my undergraduate school, this community college where I first started. So oh. we do some, hopefully, that's do great. some so more cool. stuff like that for the community. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow. I love how you're paying it forward. Like, yeah. you're already such an inspiration, but then you, you go and you do stuff like this, putting the rest of humanity to shame. No. So good for you. <laughs> no, I'm just, just, just basically trying to give back and um, help yeah. that next student get to yeah. where, the, where they're trying to go. Um, I realize that's, that's really important, just having mentors and people that can kind of guide oh, you yeah. along the pro- process. So. Yeah, I mean, your, amazing. Your, your story is really uh, quite remarkable. And, and one thing we've learned is, is that, you know, storytelling can have a huge impact. Um, on um on people's lives and learning from your experiences right and, being and able just, to see somebody who's had an experience similar to theirs and and resonate with that exactly yeah, yeah. So keep up the great work thank you. Web. Appreciate yeah. it. thank you doing awesome yeah we'll see you around youtube huh yes absolutely yeah maybe you should take his course uh, maybe <laughs> no, i should I mean, I, 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 <laughs> this is, yeah definitely <laughs> this is for that person that has no social media experience mm-hmm. yeah but you should yeah, think just about to get started I mean, doing, doing something like that too. I mean, it's a good, yeah, you know, I'm pretty sure you get contacted yeah, I, all the time. Yeah. I, it's, it's, it's a good idea, you know, and we've, we've kind of played around with it and it's, it's, you know, being a, in, in the medical field is a bit different in terms of what you can say, what you can't yeah. say, you know, because you can really get yourself into trouble. We see that a lot with, with yeah. people in medicine and, you know, when, especially for me as a, joke telling person you know i've you know, <laughs> i've got a lot of thoughts on what you oh, yeah. can and can't yeah, say <laughs> and it's all from ex- a personal yeah. experience i've learned along the way too. Yeah. so yeah um good stuff there yeah keep up the great work yeah thank you yeah we'll you absolutely. thanks for com- thanks for coming on it's been a pleasure I appreciate it and thank you guys for having me yeah it's been a pleasure uh, chatting with you and uh yeah m- much success to you and the rest of your practice thank and you. social media as well appreciate that take thank care you. Uh, hey, Kristen. Yeah. How many mites is too many mites? Uh, for me, one. Well, I have eight. That's way too many. That's a lot of mites, right? No one wants that many mites. You know where you find these guys? I'm afraid to know. On your eyelids. Yeah. Oh, I don't want that. I, I know. But like, if you ever have red, itchy, irritated eyelids, or if you get a, a crusty, flaky buildup on your eyelashes, could be because of Demodex blepharitis. Ugh. No, it's caused by these guys. I don't know. Demodex I don't want mites. it. I, I, it's just a thing that happens. They're usually not this big, though. Well, that's good. Usually, usually uh, they're they're much smaller than this, but they can still cause major problems. And so you need to go get it checked out by an eye doctor. Okay. Don't get grossed out. Get checked out. Get checked out. All right. Don't get grossed out. Get checked out. To find out more, you go to eyelidcheck.com. Again, that's e y e l i d check. C H E C K dot com to get more information about Demodex blepharitis. Well, did you get all your orthopedic surgery questions answered? Not all of them, no. <laughs> I have a lot of questions. You about do things. well with your with your history. You got yeah. The, well, sure. Your, there's that. I think it's so you can replace. Like, what can't you? You still can't replace an eyeball. Yeah can't replace a whole eyeball you should get on that 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 hasn't we haven't figured that out yet that's a tough one but like replacing an entire cervical disc what about a face can you replace a face there, there has been a face transplants all right yeah i'm telling you you can replace do they work almost anything now except because i'm just envisioning like nicholas cage john travolta face off situation it was i i don't know the details I, it was like a pop sigh type of mm. you know 
article that I saw. So I don't, mm. I don't know. Who knows how know. accurate You don't that know is. is what you're trying to say. But it was done. Say. It was done. A face transplant was done. <laughs> Someone tell me. But did it, it work? Wasn't like, no, it wasn't like <laughs> like they want, They just wanted a new face. It was no, like, like they needed a new like face. Like they needed a new face. That would. You're in dire straits if what you're needing is a new face. You can't just yeah. go out to the supermarket and slap no, one got, of those on. No, you can't. That's that's no. trouble. So it's. I think eventually we will be able to replace like the entire human head. Well, that's terrifying. I'm just saying. That gets, Medicine there's, continues there's a lot to of advance. existential questions there. You that, never know. You mm-hmm. never know where things will end up. I someday. guess not. Anyway. Why are we talking about that? I don't know. You All brought right. it up. Let's go to a fan story, <laughs> shall <Okay>. we? <laughs> so this comes from Sandra. <laughs> Sandra says, I just wanted to say thank you for the videos. I thoroughly enjoyed them, and I thought you might enjoy this anecdote. I had to see an ophthalmologist recently, and when he came in, a woman with a laptop followed him. Without a single ounce of circumspection, I blurted out to her, You're his Jonathan! (laughs) Oh no. (laughs) With a smile, she, Jonathan, nodded at me. Oh my goodness! It made my day, so I wanted to share. Thanks again for your videos. (laughs) That made my day, too. (laughs) I love it. I encourage you all to shout at Jonathan's that you see in real life. <laughs> no, <laughs> not unless you're saying shout you're doing out. a great job. So that's the second story in a row we've we've said. Like last week, we did a story where someone like mentioned like a a Jonathan, Jonathan a, not Jonathan, but a Glock and fucking reference in real life. Yeah. So far, it's worked out. Yeah. I want to yeah. hear. <laughs> I want to hear the not? stories of when it doesn't work <laughs> you out. Get like cricket. I want to hear from somebody who tried to. Do a Jonathan, or not a Jonathan, but a Glock and Fleck and reference in real life, in real time, and just nothing. Fell flat. You got just looks of confusion. That would make me laugh. I love that. Send me your stories. Let's hear it. Knock, knock, hi at human-content.com. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, that was It was uh, just a wonderful talk with Dr. Webb. Yeah, he's doing some really cool things. I love the foundation. Yeah. We need a Glock and Fleck and Foundation. Don't think I haven't thought of it. I know. We've talked about that yeah. before. Let's say we got I've it. got lots of idea- ideas. A, a lack of ideas a, is not the problem. We need a foundation specialist to guide us. We need a lot of things. Well, like, I could use so many that? people to how, help. How do, you, how do you start a foundation? Uh, anyway, give us some uh, ideas. Uh, people that you want to hear on the podcast. We'd love uh, to get your feedback and thoughts. There's lots of ways to hit us up. You can email us. Nagnakai at human-content.com. We're on all the social media platforms, even LinkedIn. Yeah, you say even, but because who's LinkedIn's on LinkedIn? having who, a moment. Who you just time don't on know. LinkedIn? I don't know. You it's, don't right, know. Right. Hang out with us and our human content podcast family on Instagram and TikTok at Human Content Pods. I don't think we've gotten human content on LinkedIn yet. Oh, well, I'm not in charge of their social media, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to all the great <laughs> listeners leaving wonder. Maybe you should be. Uh, leaving <laughs> feedback and awesome reviews. If you subscribe, they got to pay you for that, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you subscribe and comment on your favorite podcasting app and on YouTube, we can give you a shout out. Like today, Ash2424 on Apple said five stars, uh-huh. but would be cuter with more eyeballs. Ooh. Get some more eyeballs Ooh. back there in the background. Make it look like our Halloween decorations. I can get like an eyeball necklace put around. Yeah. All right. Big eyeball hat. I want a headband with eyeball antennas. Lots of eyeballs. Full video episodes are up every week on my YouTube channel at D Glock and Fleck. And we also have a Patreon. Lots of cool perks, bonus episodes, or react to medical shows and movies. Hang out with other members of the Knock Knock High community. We're there. We're active in it. We are running the show. And our early ad free episode access, interactive QA live stream events, much more. Patreon.com slash Glock and Fleck or go to Glock and Don't have to yell at them. <sighs> Now they're not going to want to come. They're going to love it. You're going to enjoy it at glockandflockin.com. Speaking of Patreon community perks, new member shout out to Sarah F. Hi, Sarah. Sarah, thanks for joining us. And <laughs> shout out to all the Jonathans, as always. Patrick Lucia C, Sharon S, Omar, Edward K, Stephen G, Jonathan F, Marion W, Mr. Granddaddy, Caitlin C, Brianna L, K, L, Keith G, JJ H, Derek and Mary H, Susanna F, Ginny J, Ginny G, Muhammad K, Avika, Parker, Ryan, Muhammad L, Medical Meg, Bubbly Salt, and Pink Macho. Macho. That's Jenny J, though. You had it right the first time. Jenny J. That's a J. Jenny J. Jenny J. Yeah. What did I say, G? You said G. Jenny G. J. Jenny J. <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Patreon roulette. Random shout out to someone on the emergency medicine tier. We got Baseball Rob. Ooh, baseball Rob. Baseball Rob plays baseball. 
Um, no, I think he's probably more of like a basketball person. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. We're your hosts, Will and Kristen Blaine. We also known as the Glock and Plekin. Special thanks to our guest, Dr. Antonio J. Webb. Our executive producers are Will Flannery, Kristen Flannery, Aaron Corny, Rob Goldman, and Shanti Brooke. Our editor and engineers, Jason Portiz. Our music is by Omer Benz V. To learn about our Knock Knock Highs program, disclaimer, ethics, policies, submission, verification, licensing terms, ever release terms. All the terms. You want to hear about the terms? We got terms. We got terms galore. You can visit glockandflecken.com or reach out to us at knockknockhighhuman-content.com with any questions, concerns, or fun medical puns. To this day, not a single person has emailed us at glockknockhighhuman-content.com. Don't about know the that. Disclaimer ethics policy. You don't Nobody know that. Nobody has even no, no. You don't check that email. We have people check the email and then they send along. So it's possible second, someone has emailed and ha- we have just not heard the about second it. Second, someone emails us about submission verification and licensing terms. I will drop everything that I'm doing and report in an emergency podcast episode. Oh, you know, we should use this as a test to find out if anyone is actually listening. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Knock knock high, by the way, is a human content production. Goodbye. Hey, Kristen. Yeah. Healthcare workers are struggling these days. I know. There's a lot of burnout. A lot of administrative burden that's driving that burnout. Yeah, it's certainly a major contributor. Clinicians spend up to two hours on administrative tasks for each hour of care provided to the patient. Yeah, that should not be the ratio. That's not sustainable. No. Fortunately... We have the Nuance Dragon Ambient Experience, or DAX for short. Oh, is that why you've got your little friend there? Oh, you noticed. Oh, I did. Yes, this is the DAX co-pilot. He's very cute. Isn't he? He's got wings. He's there to fly us to a world of less burnout All right. and more efficiency by giving us this AI-powered ambient technology that sits there in the room with you while you're with the patient, and it helps you document the encounter so you can spend more time developing that patient clinician relationship. That's right. You don't have to be looking at your computer. It's capturing it for you. It's great. To learn more about how DAX Copilot can help reduce burnout and restore the joy of practicing medicine, stick around after the episode or visit nuance.com slash discover DAX. That's N-U-A-N-C-E dot com slash discover D-A-X. Thanks for watching the episode. You can find more on that playlist over there. If you prefer to listen or you just had your eyes dilated, you can binge full episodes wherever you get your podcasts or join the party over on Patreon where you get early access episodes, hang out with us, get lots of exclusive bonus content. Hope you subscribe, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think.